why are interest rates changing at all? Like, why, why is this affecting me? What's, what's going on? So to start things off, we need to first look at the Federal Reserve. So the Federal Reserve is in charge of the country's monetary policy. And this is really just a, a fancy way of saying they make sure that the economy continues to run smoothly. They make sure that inflation doesn't get too crazy. They make sure that unemployment isn't going wildly out of control, that banks have enough money to keep things flowing and this whole system doesn't just fall apart. Uh, and, and like I mentioned, one of their big tasks is inflation and the way they monitor inflation and kind of keep things under control, especially when inflation starts to rise rapidly, as we've seen uh, in the past year or so now, is that they can raise interest rates. And what they what they're increasing is something called the Fed fund rate. And this is a rate that the Fed sets that determines how much banks will charge each other in interest when they lend money back and forth to each other because they do this all the time. Uh, and so when they adjust that rate, they're not changing it to like a specific percentage, but more so a target range. Uh, so they've been referring to the Fed fund rate as zero for a long time now, but really it was zero to 0.25 percent or a quarter of a percent because uh, it kind of moves back and forth within that range. So you may be asking yourself, OK, the Fed's raising their interest rate. What does that mean for me? Are things going to get more expensive like home loans and auto loans? And the answer, sadly, is yes. <laughs> You've probably already seen rates increasing. Uh, it's not a direct kind of like one to one change. Uh, the Fed fund rate doesn't necessarily directly impact mortgage rates, for example. Like the mortgage rate isn't the Fed fund rate. There are two separate rates from each other and they aren't directly tied, but oftentimes they move together with each other. So to illustrate kind of this relationship that exists between the Fed fund rate and mortgage rates, I wanted to show you this uh, this chart here. This is from uh, the Federal Reserve of St. Louis, uh, their website. And this chart here, you see it says Fred at the top. It always makes me laugh for some reason. I don't know. Fred is a random name, <laughs> a random acronym that they've, they've come up for this. But it's uh, Federal Reserve Economic Data. And there's a lot of really interesting data uh, on this site. And one chart here, it's comparing the Fed fund rate to 30 year fixed mortgage rates on average across the US. Uh, and so right here, I have a data point going back to, looks like we're starting at around 1981 here and all the way out to uh, 2021, basically, oh, actually really March of 2022. And so here on the top, you can see in red, this is the average 30 year fixed rate mortgage rate. And then below that, you see the Fed fund rate and they move in similar ways. You'll see that as the Fed fund rate spikes up, you'll see mortgage rates come up. As the Fed fund rate falls, you'll see mortgage rates fall. Now, as you can tell, the Fed fund rate is dropping at a much steeper decline uh, than the mortgage rate. And also when, more, when the uh, Fed fund rate jumps up, the mortgage rates don't move as sharply. So that's why I say it's not a direct one-to-one -one movement. Like the rates aren't going up at, by the same percentage uh, as each other. It's just more so the Fed fund rate influences all interest rates and mortgage rates tend to move and shift along with that. So you may be wondering, though, like we got all this bad news <laughs> regarding interest rates, like everything's going up. Uh, so, hey, doesn't that mean that I'll at least be able to make some more money in my savings account? And I want to say yes, which is true. You probably will start to make a little bit more, but I wouldn't get excited at all about this because uh, the thing is, Fed fund rate and savings interest rates they historically don't really move at the same pace. Kind of that relationship I showed you between uh, mortgages in the Fed fund rate. Let me bring that back up here for you. How when one goes up, when the Fed fund rate goes up, mortgage rates go up, not the same amount, but they do kind of move in, in, in tandem together here. If we go over and switch to this chart here. So this shows the Fed fund rate in blue and then the national rate on non jumbo deposits. So that just means uh, there's less than $100,000 in the savings account. And as you can see, it, it is almost impossible to notice the change in the interest rates paid in savings accounts. That's that red line here. You see, it's bare, it's barely even shifting around at all. Uh, whereas the Fed fund rate, we're seeing it have this huge like, kind of like hill built here. Uh, so this goes back to, uh, looks like October of 2014. And this is going out to uh, February of 2021. Okay, so if you look back here, you can see the Fed fund rate, it's like somewhere around 0.1. It's barely even registered on this graph. Uh, the sa average savings rate, was point z around 0.06%. That is, I mean, that's basically nothing <laughs> that it's paying out. And as you see, we go from around 0.1-ish on the uh, Fed fund rate all the way up here in uh, April of 2019 to 2.42. But at the same time, we see that the average on savings accounts, it's at 0.1. So it went from around, what's this, 0.06 to, <laughs> to 0.1. It barely moved at all. 
even though there's a pretty significant increase here in the Fed fund rate. Uh, so it just goes to show that really the Fed fund rate, it doesn't necessarily have a significant impact on the savings account interest rates you're going to see in, in most accounts. So when I went through and pulled some data, I went and looked back at um, like late March of, of 2022 of this year. And I found that the Fed fund rate was around 0.08%. So tiny, like nothing. Uh, savings accounts were really nothing. <laughs> they, were, they were at 0.01%. Uh, to put this into perspective, if you put $1,000 into one of those savings accounts, you would end up with 10 cents in interest over the course of the whole year. That's not just one, that's not one month. That's the entire year. <laughs> that's all you would get. So basically it was zero. Uh, and if we compare that to March of 2019, the Fed fund rate was at 2.4%. 30 times higher than it was in March of 2022, while the savings account rate, or at least the average savings, was at 0.1%. That's 10 times higher than the uh, average savings account rate in March of this year. So as you can see, the Fed fund rate was moving at about three times the rate of the average savings. So this is just another way of comparing and showing that they're not, they don't really move together, uh, at least in a significant way. Uh, but the one exception was with high yield savings accounts. So um, high yield accounts, those would be uh, typically accounts that you'll find online from uh, banks that don't have a physical location, or if they do, they have very few physical locations. And high yield is just another way of saying like high interest, high return. And if we look back to 2019, you could find interest rates easily around 2% or more than 2%. And when you compare that at the same time to the national average for savings accounts, it was 0.1%. Uh, so it was already there. You see, there's a significant gap between what you would get at a traditional brick and mortar bank versus what you would get at some of these online high yield uh, banks and their savings accounts. Uh, I just want to give you this quick breakdown here of how we can all expect to see the interest rates that we see in our lives, whether it's on the borrowing side or the saving side and how uh, inflation and as a result, the reaction of the Federal Reserve uh, by raising uh, the, the reaction of raising interest rates, how that all will flow through and kind of ultimately end up impacting us.